Hello, I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the School of Health Professions at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Thanks for joining us today for another discussion in our continuing monthly series where we interview experts in our school. These experts are leaders helping to shape the future of healthcare through tailoring innovative solutions to real world problems. Joining us today is Dr. Mary Warren. She is internationally known for her work on low vision rehabilitation and chaired the panel that developed the low vision certification. She is an associate professor and director of the graduate certificate program in low vision rehabilitation in the Department of Occupational Therapy in our school. And she is the co-director of the UAB Center for Low Vision Rehabilitation at the Callahan Eye Hospital. Mary, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Could you tell us a little bit about the difference between low vision and the definition of that and blindness and how prevalent is low vision? The basic difference between blindness and low vision is that people who have low vision have vision. They have vision that they can use if they're given proper training and, and optical devices to use it, whereas persons with blindness have no vision, so they have to find other ways to complete their activities. In terms of the prevalence of low vision, that's kind of difficult to determine exactly because of the different definitions, but the most conservative estimate is that there are three and a half million adults with significant vision impairment. More importantly though, there are um, a large number of adults who are at risk for low vision. There are 18 million older adults who have cataract and there are 9 million older adults who have age-related eye disease. In addition, we have people who experience vision impairment because of stroke and traumatic brain injury, um, who also have vision problems because of neurological diseases like Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's dementia. You mentioned uh, a few conditions that could result in low vision. Could you tell us a little bit more about what are the major causes of low vision that you see in the clinic? I can preface that by, by saying, first of all, that two-thirds of people who have low vision are over the age of 65. So age is considered the best predictor for getting low vision. That said, there are three eye diseases that contribute to about 90% of the referrals to a low vision clinic. The first one is age-related macular degeneration. It's the leading cause of low vision in adults in the United States, and that's followed by glaucoma and diabetic retinopathy. You've recently been appointed as the co-director of the UAB Center for Low Vision Rehabilitation. Could you tell us a little bit about the services that are offered through the clinic? The center is an outpatient clinic, and we provide comprehensive low vision rehabilitation services primarily to adults who either have age-related eye disease or have vision impairment from brain injury. But we also see children and, and working age adults as well. A, a person referred to the center is going to receive a very comprehensive low vision examination by one of the low vision optometrists in the center. Then they'll be referred for vision rehabilitation services and they'll be seen by the occupational therapist. And we'll work with them for s several sessions, either in the clinic or in, the, in their home or in the community on the activities that they need to do. We also have a, a orientation mobility specialist who will work with clients who have difficulty with travel because of their vision loss. And we have a psychologist to help them with adjustment issues. Could you tell us a little bit more about the role of occupational therapists uh, in the low vision clinic and why occupational therapists in particular are well suited for that role? The overall goal of occupational therapy is to enable a person to complete their valued occupations. So occupations are those everyday activities that give life meaning and value. So when we're working with, with these clients, it's, it's addressing those issues. And it can be as simple as putting on your makeup or eating, your, eating a meal without spilling and, and making a mess to driving a car, doing your finances, shopping for groceries. So it depends on what they want to, to accomplish. But because we work primarily with older adults, we have some additional issues that, that we address as therapists. And, and one of the goals, again, of occupational therapy in particular is that the person is able to age in place so that their low vision does not 
become a ticket into a nursing home or a residential facility. We want them to be able to continue to do the activities safely in their home. So we address medication management and we address falls risk and we address nutrition in the sense that they can prepare meals and, and be adequately nourished. And those are additional things that, that we do. As far as, a, as occupational therapies fit for this, occupational therapists are broadly trained in aging and disability. And that broad training serves us very well in working with people with low vision because two-thirds of them are going to have another chronic impairment that affects their ability to do their daily occupations. And as occupational therapists, we're able to address both things. So I might see a client and work with them because of their vision impairment, but at the same time, I'll address the arthritis in their hands. Um, or if they've had a stroke, I'll address those types of issues. As prevalent as low vision is, uh, based on the numbers you gave us before, it seems to me that the, these wonderful services you're describing are not known about by many, many people. Why do you think that's the case? That is probably one of the most frustrating things for us who, who work in low vision rehabilitation is that less than 10% of the people who should see us do get services. And it's not just in the United States, that's, that's an international problem. The reason is probably a, a combination of factors. There are not a lot of specialists in low vision rehabilitation even today, even though we're 20 years into it as a, as a medical uh, rehabilitation program, there still are limited clinics. But the biggest reason is that it has a slow onset. Persons with low vision are older adults. They have lived most of their life as sighted individuals. They get an age-related eye disease that starts to affect their vision in their 80s. And it's affecting them at, the, at a time when they're also just generally slowing down and experiencing other limitations. And they don't realize that that this is not a, a normal part of aging and that there are services that could help them continue to age in place. So we have a hard time getting those people to come into the clinic, whereas if, if something happens directly related from a stroke or a sudden onset like that, it's very, those, those people are automatically referred. So it's a combination of things. In addition to being the co-director of the Low Vision Rehabilitation Center, uh, I also know that you developed and direct the Low Vision Certification Program, the first of its kind, uh, in the Department of Occupational Therapy. Could you tell us a little bit about that program? Sure, I'd be happy to. Our um, program, our graduate certificate, is for practicing clinicians, so working clinicians, who want to develop competence in low vision rehabilitation. So it's graduate level education with a very specific focus. And we offer it as an online program on a, using a web-based platform. So we train therapists across the United States. And we have some international graduates as well. It consists of 15 credit hours of concentrated education, three credit hours per semester. They're with us for five semesters. Mary, thank you once again for joining us and sharing with us your expertise in the area of low vision. We really appreciate you spending time with us today. Thank you for having me. To learn more about the low vision program in our school, go to the occupational therapy website at uab.edu slash OT. To learn more about the UAB Center for Low Vision Rehabilitation, go to the School of Optometry website. If you have any questions or comments about this topic, please feel free to contact us at uab.edu slash shp slash contact. And while you're on our website, be sure to learn more about our school. Once again, thank you for joining us. I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the UAB School of Health Professions, where we're shaping the future of healthcare through tailoring innovative solutions to real-world problems. Mm -hmm.